Welcome small engine students. With this quick video, we are going to show you how to log into the Briggs and Stratton Power Portal. If I open up the internet here, you can see we're at our Canvas web page with our home screen up right there. But remember, we need to go to a different website to get into the Briggs and Stratton Power Portal. We can log in through the link on our Canvas page, or if we type in thepowerportal.com, we should end up at this page right here. The challenge is, is that we need to have a login. Well, before class started, I have taken all your school email addresses, and I have entered those in to the Power Portal system. So if you went to your email address for school, you should see an email that says, hey, welcome to the Power Portal. This email right here, welcome to the Power Portal, is going to be your link to set up that Power Portal account. All right, so let's, let's do that. So when I click into the email, it tells me my login. I use my SCCA email for this one for our class purposes here, and it gives me a temporary password. I'm going to go ahead and copy that password. I'm going to go back to the Power Portal. My login here now is my email, which for you guys will be your school email address. This was the password I got in that email. And you're going to have to agree, read through, and agree to their terms to use the site. And bam, you'll, you're going to end up on the main page, which is the Power Channel. Now, this is a new account I've created. Um, so if I go to my testing information, I haven't done any tests yet. But it gives me my qualifications and, and all my history, which is all blank. So I'm going to go back to the Power Channel. which is where we started. And this is where we're going to basically do our online Briggs and Stratton factory training. Lots of great information in here. In fact, the first one we're going to start off with our class is this one titled Four Stroke Theory and Operation. So if I click into that, I get that nice animation set up. And if I click it again... The small four-stroke engine has been the backbone of Briggs & Stratton for more than 110 years. I'll get a nice video there that goes through how four-stroke cycle engines operate. And this is a newly updated video um, from Briggs, and it's pretty good. So you'll go through the theory and operation of four-stroke cycle engines. It'll give you some background information on the engines. And this video coupled with what's in your book really should help cover that good solid foundation of how the four-stroke cycle engine works. Now when you're ready you can click over here to exams and you'll see that you have lots of choices. You can even become master certified through Briggs & Stratton on this website but that's beyond the scope of our class. What I want you to do is go right down here to Technical CTE, okay? This is where we have the basic, intermediate, and advanced testing. In our class, we're going to be sticking with the basic testing. So I'm going to click Basic. And when I do that, you can see our different testing areas. Remember, in our class, we're going to be doing uh, five different modules. 
those modules correspond to these areas. So this is module one, module two, module three, and four, and our ignition and electrical systems will be module five. If you want to do this one on parts lookup or identification, or any of the other modules and tests that are on the website, you can do those for extra credit. All right, so for cycle theory, once you are comfortable and ready and you feel like you have a good grasp on that subject matter, go ahead and jump into taking that test. So I'm going to do just that. And what you have is a test that's 10 questions long. Now these questions are not always the same. There's a bank of maybe 20 questions and the system will take those questions and uh, mix them up for you, randomize them, and then have you take the test. So with the best of your um, knowledge, take each question and make sure you read each question very carefully. Vertical shaft engines feature a crankshaft that is placed horizontally when the engine is mounted to its application. Is that true or false? That would be false. That crankshaft will be mounted vertically. So some fuel sticks to the intake port during the intake stroke. True. Valve overlap is built into the camshaft to help start which stroke? What if I pick intake? So I'll go through here and I'll just pick some random answers to generate a result. And you can see I got a score. Now, um, surprisingly enough, I know I answered the first two questions correct, but the other ones I guessed on, and you can see that I didn't do too bad because there was 10 questions on the test, I got a 70%. So that means I got seven of those questions correct and three of them incorrect. It does not tell you what questions you got incorrect. It just tells you that, hey, you got three questions incorrect and they were about stroke theory and operation, right? So it's gonna be back to you to go take the test again. In fact, I'll try to do just that. I'll go to power channel. I'll go down to my exams. Here's a different way to get there. If I go exams, I can go technical CTE basic, and I go back to the exam section. I'll take this thing again. And this time, I'm really going to just pick random answers and submit my test. Now this time I did even worse, right? What you will find is that you can keep taking the test, but after the third time you take the test and you fail it, the system is going to ask you to wait 24 hours before you can take the test again. You have essentially unlimited attempts at the exams. However, you only get three chances in any one day. So remember, when you're trying to get these certifications tests done for class, don't procrastinate. Don't wait to the last minute, the day before the exams do, and try to take it and rush your way through it. Because if you do, and you don't get the grade that you want, that's gonna be the grade you're stuck with. If you try it three times, the system will lock you out for that 24 hour period. All right, so if you pass a test, does it tell you what questions you got right, which were questions you got wrong? No, it still just gives you a score. The tests aren't perfect. They're designed to be really challenging, but Briggs and Stratton has set it up so that you can get even master certified on the system. So they're purposely not trying to make this a very easy way for you to get certified. That's why we're sticking with the easiest tests in the system, which again, are the basic five tests. I can go to power channel, 
I can click exams, technical basic, and these are the exams I'm going to take. Those are the easy exams within the system, um, and those will exactly line up with our five modules. So I hope this information uh, helps you as you progress to getting certified through Briggs & Stratton. I think you will learn a lot from the various videos and technical documents that's available to you on the website. Remember, this is the same website that professional Briggs & Stratton technicians use in the industry every day. So with that, good luck, and I hope to see you passing some Briggs & Stratton exams. Good luck getting certified.